this video, uh, we're going to learn a, fa a very famous example of uh, um, time reversible uh, markup chain. It is a uh, random walk with uh, partial uh, reflecting boundary. Uh, in previous in the gambler's room problem, we learned uh, the two ending points, or say the two ending state are absorbing. It means if we hit there, uh, we stay there forever. But uh, um, for this random walk, um, it's not. And uh, we'll see in a moment. Totally, we have m plus 1 states. Um, and let me copy down the setting. That is uh, the probability from i to i plus 1 is uh, alpha i. And uh, the probability from i to i minus 1 is uh, 1 minus this. It means we can either go up or down for these uh, m minus 1 intermediate states. And uh, uh, if we are at the left boundary, we have uh, alpha zero chance of uh, moving into uh, state one, and we have one minus uh, alpha zero chance of staying at uh, that state. Um, and the right end boundary, we have alpha capital M, the many chance to stay there, and we have one minus that uh, to be reflected back into uh, the intermediate states. If uh, all of these uh, alphas are not zero, uh, it's easy to verify this. Uh, this is ergodic and uh, not periodic. Um, to give you guys some intuition, and let me draw the state diagram when uh, when m is two. So we only have uh, uh, three states: zero, one, two. And uh, um, from state zero, um, right here, we know that we have uh, one minus alpha, and my chance uh, we stay at uh, the state, and we have uh, alpha zero, then my chance to go to state one, and from state one we have uh, um, alpha one, then my chance to go to state two, and from state two we have uh, alpha two, uh, then my chance to stay there, and we have one minus alpha 2 to be reflected and here is uh, 1 minus alpha 1 from uh, state 1 to uh, go to state 0. Okay. And then we can claim uh, this is a uh, time reversible markup chain. To see this um, it, it, it's not entirely obvious. Let me uh, let me draw s some uh, diagrams, the time diagram for you guys to see uh, to explain the textbook uh, what uh, it means. Suppose we're interested in say uh, i and i plus one, but for uh, demonstration purposes, so let me draw one more state. Let's say i minus one. This is like x sub one uh, time step, and we have. Uh, let me draw like uh, several one. And now let's say if we have these uh, eight time points. And uh, we consider a markup chain, a, a sample path, uh, say, uh, jumping between uh, these uh, states. And uh, particularly, 
uh, we're interested in. So we're curious. We are interested in the number of uh, transitions from i to i plus 1, as well as um, the number of transitions from uh, i plus 1 to i, all right? Because for time reversible um, markup chain, we want to verify um, these two, the rate of these two are equal, okay? And so, let me, for example, to draw a sample path here. Um, for example, we, we start, say, we start at i, and we move up to i uh, plus 1 uh, at x2. And let's say uh, we move down to uh, i at uh, x3, and we move down to further down to i minus 1 at x4, and then we move up uh, back to i. And let's say uh, we move up again to uh, i plus 1, and then at x7 we move back to xi, and furthermore, and uh, we move back to i plus 1. Okay. And if you guys check the number of transitions from i to i plus 1, we have, we have one transition from i to i plus 1 here, and we have one transition from i to i plus 1 here, and we have one transition from uh, i to i minus 1 here. And number of transition from i plus 1 to i, we have one transition from i plus 1 to i, and we have another transition from i plus 1 to i, okay? And uh, we, we find that because for this marker chain, okay, this is kind of special because uh, for one step transition, we can only go to uh, one state's intermediate neighbor. For example, if we're at state 1, we can either go to state 2 or state 0. But from state 0, we cannot go to state 2 in just one step. And based on this fact, uh, we have the following claim. That is, uh, between two transitions, uh, from i to i plus 1, uh, there exists one transition from i plus 1 to i. To see this, apparently this is true, we can verify. For example, um, this transition is from i to i plus 1, this transition is from i to i plus 1, and in between we have a transition from i plus 1 to i. Okay. And uh, uh, similarly, we have here is a transition uh, from i to i plus 1, and here's another transition from i to i plus 1, and between them we have a transition from i plus 1 to i. Very similarly, we can also verify between uh, two transitions of i plus 1 to i, there must exist one transition uh, from i to i uh, plus 1. For example, uh, right here, we consider two transitions from i plus 1 to i, and there has to be one um, transition from i to i plus 1 um, in between. This is, this is quite straightforward to, uh, to be understood, because uh, if we want to go up um, from i to i plus 1, and uh, the second time from i to i plus 1, here, uh, we have to go down uh, before that, because here, we uh, we went up here, okay? 
but somewhere here uh, we started uh, in a state that's uh, smaller than the previous step uh, the previous this i plus one state it means in between we must go down uh, that's why uh, there must exist um, a, uh, a state transition from i plus one to i and let me add a uh, let me add a, a little here let's say um, between uh, every no, not just two transitions I should say uh, between every two transitions and this actually implies the number of transitions uh, the number of transitions from i to i plus 1 is equal to the number of transitions from i plus 1 to i. And as a result, um, we have um, these two satisfy our equation. Moreover, we know that um, we can only go to our intermediate neighbor. We cannot jump uh, two states at uh, one step. And this actually means when uh, the states are at least uh, two states apart, um, the probability of them transition to one another is zero. So, as a result, uh, it doesn't matter like what pi of pi j is. Uh, this equation is always satisfied because uh, they are both zero. And now, if we write down our equation uh, using this, we'll find that um, this sub pi i pij pi j times pji uh, is satisfied for any ij not just uh, uh so here we verify the uh, the neighbors are satisfied and here we verify the non-neighbors this equation is satisfied as well and now let's uh, write down the uh the equation for uh limiting probabilities And starting from uh, uh, pi zero, we have pi zero times p zero one is uh, pi one times p one zero, and this is nothing but uh, uh, pi zero alpha zero equals uh, pi one one minus alpha one. And uh, let's continue to write down this equation. And similarly. Uh, we can have pi 1 times alpha 1 equals pi 2 times 1 minus alpha 2 and uh, etc. In general we have this uh, pi i alpha i is uh, pi i plus 1 uh, 1 minus alpha i plus 1 and this is for any i in 0, 1, till m minus 1. And because of this, we can solve uh, solve for every probability um, pi 1 till pi m in terms of pi 0 by this uh, recursive reasoning. So for example, the first equation just implies we can solve this equation for uh, pi 1. And we get this is uh, pi 1 is uh, alpha 0 divided by 1 minus alpha 1 times pi 0. And then if we can solve pi 2 in terms of pi 1, we have this is alpha 1 divided by 1 minus alpha 2. 
pi 1 and using this uh, iterative reasoning we reach uh, this formula right here and in general we can solve for every pi i uh, in terms of uh, pi 0 so let me copy down the subscript divided by 1 minus alpha i, 1 minus alpha minus 1, and uh, till 1 minus alpha 1 times pi 0. As we can see, um, we solved every probability in terms of uh, uh, pi 0. And lastly, to uh, solve for pi 0, uh, we only have to plug in this uh, equation which is i from 0 to capital M pi i is 1 and then uh, we can solve for pi 0 and uh, um, so for a simple exercise um, um, is if uh, how does this model, like uh, we can solve for explicit solution, if uh, this one is a constant for any i. Okay, uh, this is actually one of the example in the uh, in textbook. Uh, let me check. And then next one is much harder. So we'll uh, we'll analyze uh, in next video. Um, this is uh, Ehrenfest uh, a model, which is the origin of uh, this time reversible market chain. Um, it's basically we have two ends, and we have a bunch of uh, balls in it. Say we have total uh, m balls. And we have two ends, and each time, uh, each time, uh, we choose uh, one ball from uh, from an uh, like random, okay, and we put this ball into another. Urn. And we're curious of uh, the number of urns. So x sub n is the number of uh, balls in, let's say, urn uh, number 1. Okay. And in the next video, we're going to analyze uh, this example.